So Test Tracker's SAD ACD program is built for the busy student and I think one of the busiest set of students are athletes. So uh, I know you work with a lot of them, uh, supporting them in the program. Uh, so I thought it was a good opportunity to sit down with you and ask you a couple of questions about them. And my first question is, what should aspiring D1, D2, D3 players know when it comes to scores and college applications? Yeah, so this whole process, and I mean, I actually hadn't even shared this story with you about my experience, but I was recruited to play D3 basketball, and really? it was something that I thought about. I really wanted to continue playing because I love playing, um, but in the end, it always came back to academics and what I wanted to study. Mm -hmm. So being an athlete didn't change any of those things. It actually just heightened the, the necessity for it. Mm -hmm. So thinking about my grades at all times and uh, especially my scores. Um, it was something that my test scores, it was something that we really had to think about and see, well, can I get into the schools whether I'm playing basketball or not? Mm -hmm. So it was something that I had to consider and think about. and. Um, I had to put a lot of time and effort into, though I wish I would have put more time and effort into it, right. but that's uh, another, another piece off. of the project. Right. Yeah, so. <laughs> so so now you know you get to talk to a lot of coaches through what we do, mm -hmm. um, and what did they say in particular about, you know, do scores matter? Does it need to be a high score or some sort of athletic minimum score? Uh, I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there about this. So what have the coaches told you uh, when you've asked them this question? Yeah, so it's incredibly important for them. You want to make their lives easier. And one of the themes that they always hit on is if I have a kid coming in to play for me that can academically make it and can get some kind of academic scholarship as well, right. that frees up money for him, he, for he or she to go out and get even better players. So you can actually make your team better mm -hmm. by, by being a better student mm -hmm. um, and freeing up some of that money there by getting financially from the school for your academic side. So right. you can do a lot of things. It helps your athletic career to be better in school. Um, right. So it's something you should always be striving to you know, be the best at just like you are on the field. Got it. So I'm picking up a lot of things that are now important to students and especially aspiring student athletes. Uh, you said GPA, you said uh, their level of athleticism, uh, and you now said SAT or ACT scores. So that's, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, in your experience of working with these students for the last five years, yeah. uh, what tips can you give when it comes to preparing for the SAT or the ACT? Yeah, so the biggest thing is to set up a plan, to, to make sure that you actually have like a strategy for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. The same way that, you know, if I, were, I was going to basketball camps in high school to strategically get better at dribbling with my left hand or like right. very specific basketball skills, the same thing goes for the, for, for the school skills and your academic skills. So testing, SATs, ACTs, they're learnable skills. It's something that you can absolutely build into your schedule mm -hmm. and understand if you plan out long enough in advance that mm -hmm. it's something that it doesn't have to be as stressful, it doesn't have to be this mm -hmm. painful process. Mm -hmm. You can ease into it and actually be, you know, reach your goals and reach your, your best, your potential mm -hmm. by just setting up a, a, a useful plan. Okay. So pushing you into like a little bit of the details of, okay, I'm a student, I just heard you want me to make a plan. H how do I go about making this plan? What do, I, what do you want me to do? Yeah, so first thing is know that they, like, they exist, that these tests exist. Mm -hmm. So part of it is just educating yourself on that it's a, a thing mm -hmm. that, that you need to do. Mm -hmm. So part of that, and going to like test writer, that's what we create these, these, all these resources for, or we've talked to you at various camps mm -hmm. um, what, that we've been able to be present at. Right. So just letting you know, hey, there are certain times when you can take the SAT, there are mm -hmm. certain times when you can take the ACT, just know when they happen. Know what the the sign up process looks like. Know mm -hmm. that you have to sign up for them multiple years in advance or multiple months in advance. Excuse mm -hmm. me, um, and and understand that you know I can take them multiple times. It doesn't really matter when I'm actually taking them, except that you know I'm meeting deadlines. You right. don't want to leave it till the end or like that very last minute because right. 
that becomes part of your full-time job of applying to, to schools and reaching out to coaches and trying to get recruited and things like that, right. this shouldn't be hanging over your head. You can do this earlier. And right. it's something that you know most students don't know that. It's that all their friends are actually taking taking these tests you know, spring of their junior year first or something mm -hmm. like that. You can actually push it up a little bit and mm -hmm. get it done sooner if it makes more sense for your schedule. But a lot, right. of, a lot of kids don't know that. It's just when they hear about it from their counselors or things like that. Right. So we're trying to help with that and, and try to make more sense of it. So knowing about the tests earlier, maybe even earlier than when your high school counselor gets around to talking to you about it. Right. And like knowing how it fits into your schedule, you're saying. Yeah. And then um, I also picked up that you said knowing take that you can take it multiple times. I mean, it really does surprise me that a lot of families don't realize that you could take it multiple times, yeah. or that schools, many schools, would consider combining your best scores. Um, so this is all good information to know when yeah. it comes to prepping. Yeah. Um, I guess the last question would be something you know when I went to these camps and. I talk to students, they ask me as well as, um, you know, how to reduce testing anxiety because, um, you know, they feel like maybe I know the material or I'm a good student at school, but when it comes to the SAT or ACT sitting in the room at 8 a.m. or whatever, yeah. uh, you know, I feel like I'm going to choke up. So. Um, what kind of advice do you have about anxiety? Yeah, so, and especially for athletes, it's a much easier thing to understand and to put into terms of how you're practicing and preparing for your games. Right. So if you've seen it in practice before, right. when it comes time in the game, you're not shocked by it and you don't mm -hmm. freeze up. And it's mm -hmm. something that that's, you've reduced that stress right. based on you know that, tense, that, that really tense period of time. Testing is the exact same experience. If, you, right. if you're able to practice ahead of time, you can eliminate a lot of that that shock that could come from a question that doesn't look familiar. Right. You limit the amount of times that that happens to you, mm -hmm. and your anxiety will go down. It's something that, again, an extra extra planning too won't right. put too much pressure on a single test day. That's where right. taking it multiple times can actually right. reduce that as well. So it's practicing. You know, practice makes perfect. Practice reduces all kinds of things because right. you've seen it before, right. um, and that's where you know we're trying to help explain that to students and preaching that mental side of how you're preparing for for not only your games but also right. how you're approaching the entire recruiting process right the same kinds of principles apply to testing to apply to all parts of your academic life so right. just keep applying the same principles and, and it, it all works so familiarity reduces anxiety yeah got it great thanks michael yeah